Hello, this is Matthew Horning from USD 457. Today I'm discussing the cell phone and wireless device usage policy at our district. Before we discuss that, we need to discuss the setup of our district. Our district has four different levels of our grades. The first level is elementary, which is kindergarten through fourth grade. The intermediate level, which is fifth through sixth. Our middle school, which is seventh and eighth. And then our high school is ninth grade through twelfth grade. Our policy for cell phones and wireless um, has been set for several reasons. Um, in years past, cell phones have not been a big issue, but as technology has advanced and device prices have become cheaper, we are seeing students with them at younger and younger ages. There are students in kindergarten that now have them. In our district, we must be fair and consistent with how students are allowed to have their phones when they are allowed to use them and what happens to them when they do not meet our expectations. Each school is able to handle the use of cell phones or wireless devices their own way, but must meet the requirements that the district has set in place. For the elementary, intermediate, and middle schools, students are not allowed to use cell phones at any time during the school day. They must remain out of sight and be turned off. At the elementary and intermediate schools, students may check their cell phones in at the office or with the teacher when they arrive. They may pick those up at the end of the day. Depending on the school, some schools prefer the teachers to collect them, and some schools prefer that they are collected at the front offices. As long as they are collected, it shouldn't be an issue with them going off in class. At the high school, it's a little bit different. Their students are older and are able to handle more responsibilities. So our policy goes as this. Students may use cell phones before school, during lunch, during passing periods and after school. Cell phones are not to be turned on during class time. However, cell phones may be allowed during class time for instructional purpose at the discretion of the classroom teacher. If a student is seen using a cell phone in any part of the building during class time without the express permission of the teacher as part of the instruction or if the phone disrupts the class in any way, a teacher or staff member will confiscate the phone and take it to the office. Not only does this go for our cell phones, but it also goes for our wireless devices such as iPads and iTouches as well. Or of the tablets. All grade level consequences. Alright, first offense. The cell phone use will be recorded as an electronic device referral. The students may pick up the cell phone at the end of the school day. Second offense. The cell phone use will be recorded as an electronic device referral and the student's parents or guardians must come to the school to pick up the phone or device. Additional violations or refusal to give the phone to a staff member when requested will result in consequences up to and including suspension or open defiance. If a student is observed using a cell phone during a testing, the academic dishonesty policy will be followed. If a student is observed using a cell phone during any state assessments, Additional consequences, including suspensions from school, may be imposed. With the new devices, students are finding different ways of cheating in class, and it's up to not only the students to be responsible for the actions, but also for the teachers to take an active part in watching the students with what they do and, and looking for integrity issues that may arise. Wireless devices. Um, this school year, we have a new high school, and with our new high school, the students are allowed to have iPads which is furbished by the high school. Um, with this comes a lot of responsibility for not only the students but for the teachers and the parents as well. Um, some concerns from the community is was it a waste of money for the school to provide these for our students and you know it can be an argument that both sides have good points that they point out but as with with anything um, when it's new, we have to work out the problems that may that may arise from it. So we got to make sure that not only are the students using what is provided for them, but they're using it appropriately and using it for educational purposes and getting what they can out of it. It doesn't make sense for the school to have it if the students aren't using it. Some staff concerns that we have are students, you know, not paying attention during class and playing on the games. And, you know, and part of that comes with how the teachers run their classrooms. They need to be able to observe the students and make sure they're doing what they are supposed to be doing. 
opportunities for improvement. Right now our district is dealing with growing pains and for an example would be the effective use of the iPads. They're able to take pictures in classrooms so they make sure that they're taking pictures of appropriate things what they're supposed to be doing but it also helps the students save time when copying notes down. So they have their iPads there, they can take pictures, make things a lot quicker and we're able to cover more topics in class and also students are able to take good reliable notes and for the students that write a bit slower you know it's helping them to, to keep up in class um, another issue um, use of free apps available for iPads um, unfortunately our district doesn't have a list of all of the apps that are available for educational uses and right now we're getting responses from the students we're getting responses from teachers and from parents of apps that we can use in class unfortunately not all apps are high quality and you know they have to be sorted out and our district is able to block certain apps and we just need to know which apps are ones that, that shouldn't be allowed or are not productive for our students um, teachers and administrators enforcing district policy consistently and fairly is also an issue not all teachers teach the same way unfortunately not all teachers own their classroom with proximity and, and walking around and when you get into the heat of the moment of teaching it, it is a challenge to make sure all students are where they need to be you know and not on different types of social media where they're not paying attention whereas they should be so it is vitally important for the success of the new technology and the media available in classrooms that our teachers be actively involved with what our students are doing and monitoring and guiding the students an appropriate technology behavior in the classroom. Okay. What's in store for the future? Well, newer technology being integrated into the classroom at younger grade levels. Right now our high school is the only school in our district that supplies iPads for our students. But, you know, they're also using cell phones for different social media. Um, prior to this year, cell phones were not allowed in, in, the, in the high school and had been confiscated and there had been a lot of referrals from them. But this year since we're opening up and we're giving some more responsibility to our students, we're seeing less issues with cell phones being taken out at inappropriate times and students are following the teacher's instructions of when to use different types of wireless devices, you know, including the cell phones. Um, well, this is at the high school level. There are a lot of apps that would benefit students, you know, in the middle school, intermediate, and also in the elementary level. So as we get more familiar with the technology and as we see that it's being used in other nations to, to get their students pushed higher and working harder, you know, most likely we're going to see it um, trickle down to the lower grade levels, which is exciting for not only our students, but for our teachers and finding more engaging ways of teaching our students. You know, our district continues to be on the cutting edge and enabling our students to be competitive in the global marketplace. You know, let's let's face it, you know, we don't have the same jobs today that we did 10 or 15 years ago, and probably the jobs that are going to be here in 10 to 15 years aren't even around yet. And technology is something that is, is pushing us to work to, to have our students be better problem solvers and to be able to use the resources that they have available to them. The best way to be competitive is you know, to have your tools in mind and to use what we have available for us. So it's an exciting time for our school district. I'm excited to see what changes we're going to be making in the next couple years and if we're going to be able to get those technologies forced down to the younger grade levels like, such as integrating the iPads and using the wonderful resources that we have available to them. Thank you for your time and I hope this presentation was educational for you and helped you understand what our district policies are concerning cell phones and technology and what our expectations are for our students and for our teachers. You know, if you have any questions, you know, please see your building administration for further details. Thanks.